Blog Talk Radio. Whatever you're doing, and watch this uh, presentation in its fullest, and also that you might, should you have any questions, so you have my email address. Amen. Email me. God is gathering His remnant church uh, together for this last final stand, this last final battle of Armageddon, and again, He is gathering the remnant flock right now that we can uh, be together. And we stand the fiery darts of the adversary. That we can reflect the glory of God through His sanctified Holy Ghost filled church. And again, that church is built upon a rock. And no matter what comes against us, we will stand. Yeah. And uh, uh, let, let me get uh, Matthew 28 and 19. And I'll jump over to 2 Peter chapter 3. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. All right, the Bible is the inspired word of God for divine Bible is divine instruction. It is the word of God. Again, uh, the Bible is the divine word of God. Amen. It comes to lead us and guides us and tells us what we must do in order to be saved and that we may maintain our salvation through the spiritual food that is given us within the context of the scripture. Now, Paul wrote the church and said, all scripture must be rightly divided or properly interpreted. Uh, thereby, we can really have a complete understanding of what thus saith the Lord. Now, lay people are not to rightly divide the word of God. It's the teacher who teaches the lay people what the divided word or the properly interpreted word is so that we all can be of one accord. Again, Paul wrote the church in 1 Corinthians of chapter 1 that we all speak the same thing, that there be no division amongst us. All right, in 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, jump right in at verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. Yes. And also in all his epistles. Now he's speaking about Peter, is speaking about the writings of the Apostle Paul. Uh -huh. Speaking in them, as, in all, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Some things in the Bible, and in the writings especially of the Apostle Paul, are hard to be understood. Uh -huh. Which they that are unlearned and unstable. And they that are unlearned, those who are not taught correctly. Uh -huh. And unstable, rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. If you don't have the divine knowledge, you can't come into a full comprehension of what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Therefore, it's impossible for you to be saved. Yes. So here Peter is trying to give a warning to the New Testament church that we are to take Paul's writings, but we have to understand that some of the teachings of the Apostle Paul is very difficult to comprehend or to understand. That's why God sends a prophet to write the divine word and to bring the word to the people that the people again and the church can be of one accord. God never had a divided church. Amen. God never had denominations. God never had Baptist, Methodist, uh, Pentecostal, or, or Apostolic, or uh, whatever, uh, uh, 
Lutherans, Episcopalians. God never had all that. Amen. But he did have a Pentecostal church Amen. because the church was properly identified on the day of Pentecost right. where Peter preached the first sermon under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And when they asked Peter what to do to be saved, he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. Yes. Now we open up in Matthew 28 19 where the instruction went forward, go ye therefore and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. Now again, uh, the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. So when Peter took that instruction and put it into a fruition, and they asked Peter what they would be to do to be saved, he told them to be baptized in the name of Jesus, who is the Father again, he is the Son of Redemption and the Holy Ghost indwelling in the church. Amen. So when we baptize in the name of Jesus, we have fulfilled the obligation or the commandment God had given in His divine instructions in Matthew 28 and 19. Now again, what we have to fully understand, give me uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. We have to fully understand. The Bible is not easily uh, comprehended, but it has to be received with an open mind as the teacher unfolds the hidden things of the Bible yes. to the individual. Amen. Now again, Jesus spoke oft times in parables, and the whole Bible is based in a certain uh, context, whereas he uses words that can be used in a multiple interpretation, but you have to have a teacher to teach you what the proper division is in that particular word. Amen. Uh, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. Now here is an important instruction here. Let as many servants, talk about church folk, who are under the yoke. The yoke means under the holiness rule or instructions found again in the Bible divine order or divine instructions. Amen. Count their own masters worthy of all honor. Yes. That the name of God and that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Uh, now uh, their own masters mean the word master literally means rabbi or instructor. Worthy of all honor that the name of God and his doctrine, God's doctrine. Amen. The doctrine is from God. It's not yeah. from an apostle, it's not from a prophet, it's from God. Yeah. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for the doctrine. Alright, so here we see an instruction given to the preacher that uh, you have to be willing to submit to the divine authority so that God's word cannot be twisted and turned to bring a reproach on the church. We see this in yes, uh, the yes. Sodomite lesbian revolution. Mm -hmm. We see how there are pastors who are afraid to speak out against sodomy and lesbian behavior. There are pastors in the Detroit area uh, who have what uh, lesbian churches or lesbian so-called pastors a few blocks from them, yet they won't speak out and condemn it. They won't get a sign and go ahead and pick it in front of it and Amen. tell the people, you, you, you in abject sin, you're yeah. following a, a, a hypocrite in the name of the Lord, you're blaspheming yeah. the word of God. Anytime there's a lesbian or a sodomite or a pastor who's afraid to condemn a sodomy and lesbian behavior, he won't, he won't speak out against it. This person is a hypocrite in the church. Man, and it has to, these things have to be pointed out. Because brothers and sisters, we're in a day and time where the church must come together in the unity of one spirit. That we can withstand all the forces of evilness that's coming against the church today. And the world is turning upside down. They had more, I, I found out the other night, they had more forest fires in Texas and Arizona than they ever had in history. That's right. Five million acres have been burned up and it's hardly on, even on the news. Don't you know there's a catastrophic event taking place in America today? More forest fires, more floods, Amen. more uh, uh, devastating tornadoes last year than ever recorded in history. So God is trying to get the attention of the people and let them know something is not right here. Yes. And I'm saying these, oh, hear me, hallelujah. Amen. This is a warning not to the people, but to the New Testament yes, church, yes. that we got to get right yes. and stay under the blood cover. Hallelujah. Yes. We can escape these things that are headed toward America in the future. 
We've got to understand the importance of staying together. And those who are with you too, I'm asking you to be with us in Savannah, Georgia, the fourth weekend of September. Is that, is that the fourth weekend? The last weekend in September, I believe that's the fourth weekend, Saturday and Sunday service in Savannah, Georgia, at our grand opening at our church there in Savannah. Amen. Now, if you go to the YouTube, truelightpentecostal.org, and you can find the exact location, Saturday night service is at 7 p.m., Sunday service is at 4 p.m. That's the last weekend in uh, September, Saturday, and Sunday. Again, uh, let, let, let's turn to some complex uh, teachings. I want you to turn to Second Chronicles 20, 19. Amen. And uh, the point we're trying to bring out here, brothers and sisters, is fully understanding uh, Scripture so that you can use the Scripture as a guideline. Amen. God uses personalities in the Bible for a specific reason. And that is to show a character and whether that character be a flaw or whether it be a positive asset unto God. Now whenever you see that there is not a repentant heart, then you know that person uh, is not, if the scripture text ends in a negative, then that person that is involved has to be held in a negative context concerning the passage of scripture that refers to the individual as a leader. Read, read right. that passage. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for he had, he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. Now, the word naked again means revealed or uncovered. Now, if we take, uh, turn to Genesis 9 and 25, Teach. And, uh, 9 and 23, mm -hmm. and here we see uh, where it could easily be said, because again, if you don't recognize by the word of God, if you don't hold, hold a proper balance, line for line, precept on precept, you will miss a, a, a teaching point that is very, very important. Yes. Yes. Now, often God will show where a person was upright before him and was mighty in, in, in his uh, servitude of God, but toward the end, you will uh -huh. find where that person stumble. Now what is God showing? God is trying to show no matter how strong or how much of anointing an individual can have, if he's not steadfast in the faith, he will stumble and fall. Amen. I want to read that passage. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Uh -huh. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. Uh -huh. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now, now Noah awoke from his wine. <laughs> Noah had got drunk. Now, again, why was this passage scripture in the Bible? Amen. It's trying that at the beginning Noah was an upright man, That's right. a righteous man before the Lord. His character. But after Noah had discovered mm -hmm. the process of making wine, mm. which is grape juice, but the, what we call or the Bible calls all of the wine. Yeah. We call wine a fermented beverage, and uh, the unfermented we call it grape juice because there's really no difference between grape juice and wine except you let one set for a while. And once it ferments, yeah. uh, then it can come, become an intoxicant. Yeah. And Noah, now, uh, as I've shared with you in times past, now whether it was by accident or whether it was by design, I believe it had to be by accident. But one thing is for certain, he knew that this beverage, after it fermented, mm -hmm. had created an atmosphere, a euphoria in him that was not, not good. Now the Bible says he drunk, but shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Case closed. Now again, read that that, that next passage. Uh, you, you, uh, verse twenty three. Read verse twenty four. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Uh -huh. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Uh -huh. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell. Read verse twenty three again. Yeah. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their Verse shoulders. Two. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Uh -huh. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward. And they now they back saw the nakedness of the father as he lay drunk or he woke up from his drunkenness. Amen. Now, did... did uh, 
did Ham see Noah in his stupor? And this and, and began to make fun of him, mock him, and finally Noah came out of his drunkenness, awoke from his drunkenness, and saw what his son had done. Now, here's the point we're trying to show here. God began to unfold something within the character of Noah. That's right. Because God would not say a drunk that you're not here at the kingdom of heaven and then turn around and say it's all right if, if, if Noah got drunk. Because if it's all right for Noah to be drunk and God has no respect to prison, then it's all right for me and you to get drunk. Amen. Amen. Now, how do we know since it was not in the law that Noah is held responsible? Well, how do we know that when Cain killed his brother, since murder was never recorded before in the law, how do we know it was wrong? First of all, God cursed a king and said, That's right. uh, uh, go into the land and not. That's yeah, right. And put a mark on his head and say, I don't want nobody to harm him because he wanted a punishment on Cain for what he had done. Now, when God sent the sons to see the nakedness of the father, that meant to expose the character or the nature of Noah at this particular time in his life. Now Noah had, I say, he had no business getting drunk. Amen. That's right. Now he got drunk because he wanted. Now here's the point: nobody knows how many times he got drunk. That's right. What, right. About 500 years old. Right. So, so no, how, 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 how long had he been going through this? Mm -hmm. One thing for certain: he'd been going through it long enough for God to what uncover. That's right. Now, the point I'm trying to show you here: any time a person goes to a length in sin, sooner or later. God will uncover him. On, now, showing, seeing his nakedness meant again to expose his character. Yes, Lord. Now, amen. God exposed his character for a reason. Give me Second Timothy. I mean, uh, Second King, First Kings, eleven chapter. Teach uh, from right in the verse four. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Yes. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abominations of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. He went not fully after the Lord. Now again, what we're seeing, we're seeing a character change. Divine instruction comes to keep a person in tune with God, and it can only be in tune with God through character. The character represents the inner being and the responsibility that the inner being has in servitude to God and the character will always be revealed no matter how clever or how secretive a person may do in a double life sooner or later that person is going to be revealed. All right, All right now read that, read, that, read that again. Verse, give me verse 5. For Solomon went after Asherah, the goddess of the Asherah. The first goddess named there is the goddess Asherah or Easter. Mm -hmm. The Easter bunny, the Easter rabbit. Amen. Amen. Easter celebration. That is the first god, or we know it to be the Babylonian goddess Ishtar. That's the first goddess represented. Now, why was Solomon, a man who was so favored with God, that God allowed him to build the temple and wouldn't even allow David, who was a man after God's own heart, to build the temple. When David wanted to be the temple, build the temple, God said, no. Yep, sure did. I'm going to let Solomon build the temple. Now, if Solomon was handpicked and favored by God, why did this passage of Scripture come to bear? Because, again, I'm going right back to the beginning. If your character does not be, is not held steadfast to God, sooner or later, Nakedness will be revealed. Your character represents who you are. Whenever you see the word or when you hold the scripture context of nakedness in the context of what you've been dealing with, you will see the perfect purpose, what it was saying, is trying to show the revelation of a person's character. Amen. Now, uh, take note in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse 27, verse 26. And again, we're dealing with a character. Neither shalt, thou go, neither shalt thou go up by step unto mine altar. Now when God was preparing the altar mm -hmm. for worship, now the person who is in representative 
has to be holy. When you come to a sanctified church and you commit your life to God, you have to be holy before the Lord. Now read that again in Neither, its entirety. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto my altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Your nakedness not be discovered, or your character not. Why? Because now we're dealing with we're dealing with holiness. Amen. Ephesians 4 and 27. These things are not taught today because the Antichrist who controls the churches today is trying to present a church full of hypocrites to present back to God when he comes back. But God said he would not leave himself without a witness and all things are given by inspiration of God or scriptural context given by inspiration of God so that we can have a knowledge and not make the mistakes that they made. Read. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Ephesians 4 and 27. Uh, 4 and 24. And that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Righteousness and true holiness. Yes. This is the requirement of the New Testament church. Back up to verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. The Bible has warned about false prophets. No one, no one should be deceived in holiness concerning false prophets. Amen. As long as you line up the spiritual leader with the Word of God or Bible divine instructions. If you hold to the Bible divine instructions, you will never be faked out of position by a false prophet because it reveals Amen. the falsity in the teacher. Yes. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now this is God speaking and God can only speak through the Bible or the divine instructions. And the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word what? was God. So we have to understand the importance of the Bible. And this is why we don't try to change it. We don't try to alter it. Give me Revelation 22, uh, 19. Again, how does God hold His Word so, sanct so sacred that He protects His Word by an apostolic curse? Read. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. Any man take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. If you add on or if you take away. Verse 18 deals with adding on. Verse 19 deals with taking away. God will take your name out of the book of life. We've got to understand the importance of the Bible. Why is it that pastors don't teach the Bible anymore? Amen. What is so complex about the veil covering? Amen. Why is it they're not teaching the veil covering? Because it's not, it's not modern. It's not popular. But again, the Bible is not to, written to be popular. The Bible is not trying to make a popular church per se. But God is, try, God is trying to make a people who is popular with God and not popular with the world. So if you want to be popular with the world, you will never be popular with God. So we have to understand the importance of coming out from amongst them and being a separated people. This is important. Can you give me that passage? Is that, what is that? 1 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians? Chapter 6. Around verse 14 is it? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. Now, what do you think God is saying here? If you have loved ones or friends who are not in holiness, how can they possibly be your friend? How can they have any type of fellowship with you other other than if it's a relative, a blood relative? Yes, you have a bond through a genetic coding. You have a bond. But I'm trying to explain to you, if you can catch hold to this. Again, what the Peter says, some things are to be understood. Amen. That's why I'm sent to teach you. Yeah, man. Anytime you have relatives who are bonded genetically to you, you still have to understand there has to be a certain separation. Yeah. Because first of all, they know what you stand for. And they do not like what you stand for. That's, right. That's why you wear a veil covering and they don't. Yes. 
That's why you have your face clean and they put the makeup on. Because there is a difference. And you can't put two together who are different in a spiritual yes. context concerning a divine instruction. Amen. Either you follow God or you don't follow God. You can't have it both ways. You can't have a love for certain family members who hate your church. All right, that's right. You can't do that. Because if they hate the church, I don't care what they say about Jesus, they hate Jesus. Right. Because the church is Jesus. Hallelujah. Right. And Jesus is God. Yes. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, you have to understand that I'm saying this in this context. You treat everybody right. But you cannot have a fellowship or a camaraderie or a relationship with people who do not like your church. Amen. It is impossible to establish or even more impossible to maintain. So what you have to do is learn how to pick up your cross and follow after God. And I'm saying to the dear sister in uh, Arkansas, I believe, yeah. Amen. got you a package the other day. Yes, thank you. But I'm trying to say that may not be enough. If God is calling for a separated people, you have to learn how to come out from amongst them and be separate. And when we say come here, and I say come here to Spottenburg, I mean for you to come to Spottenburg if you don't have a whole suitcase. Amen. Now again, we are coming to a climatic stage of life journey, and you have to be prepared to follow divine instruction. This is what happened when Moses led the people to a promised land. They did not want to go. They did not want to follow Moses. Right. And not only did they not want to, they kept rebelling along the way. They now they followed. Amen. But what happened? They were so unhappy, so miserable, so yeah. argumented, so dissatisfied, yeah. till they kept a squabble all the time. Y'all sure listen to me? Amen. Yeah. And one by one, God began to create circumstances where they would know. I, I'm God, and I, I got something planned for you if you can just make it to the other side. Yeah. This All you got to do is follow the leader to the other side. But they didn't want to follow the leader. They got so rebellious, they wanted to kill the leader yeah. that God had appointed and appoint somebody else. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can't take out who God has put in to put who you want in. You can put in Obama all you want, but if Obama's an enemy of God, you better leave Obama alone. You better hurry up and follow me. These are critical times we're in. Yes. And we've got to understand that God is separating his people. Now, what where does he go? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness. If you in the knowledge of the truth. <laughs> How are you going to fellowship or have a camaraderie with someone who does not have the truth? That's just like you being uh, a, a nuclear physicist. And then you're going to try to have a conversation with someone who uh, majored in gymnastics. What kind of conversation are you going to have? You, 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 you drive bus, but you're going to have a conversation with someone who flies a jet airplane. That's right. What y'all going to talk about? Yeah. Ain't too much you can talk about but the weather. Amen. And then that runs out because the weather is the weather. Yeah. So what kind of conversation, what kind of dialogue y'all going to have? You can't have no dialogue. Here's the point I'm trying to say. If God is constantly feeding you the righteousness of holiness message, you can have no relationship with someone who is not in tune to the holiness message. Amen. Because it, it, it aggravates them. When they see you with a veil covering, sometimes they can put so much pressure on you, you want to take your veil covering off until at, at least till after uh, I'm out of their presence because I really I'm taking it off because I don't want to uh, I don't want to offend them. But but do you want to offend God? Uh -huh. Didn't he say if you're ashamed of me, uh -huh. I'll be ashamed of you yeah. before my father, which is in heaven, which he's talking about the spirit, which is in heaven. So he said, I'll be ashamed of you. You can't be ashamed because God has given you a divine instruction. You you, you are to be proud of who you are. Be proud of the of the mental responsibility God has placed on you. You two, I hope somebody's listening who has a mind to be saved. If you go into a church and they do not teach the bell covering, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, they don't teach the bell covering, 
That is a false prophet. Leave away from that church. I don't care how sweet he is, how much he can preach. I don't care how good he can sing. Amen. God, he's a false prophet. And I want to say to some of these Pentecostal preachers, you used to teach the bell covering, but now you're afraid to because you don't want to lose no membership. There, there's no such thing as a membership in the church of God. You ain't got nothing but a social club. They put on the side, outside your door, uh, this is the uh, Baptist Social Club All Welcome. Because <laughs> that's all you are is a social club. <laughs> Get me ber uh, verse uh, 18. I mean, 4 and 18. Ephesians. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance. When you don't have divine instructions, this puts you against God, which makes you an adversary. Adversary means someone who opposes. When you oppose God, He sends you an instruction. Through a leader. When you follow the instructions, then you are no longer an adversary. But anybody who follows a false prophet, you are an adversary just like the false prophet is. Because if the blind need the blind again, both should stumble and fall. Yes. So we have to understand the importance again of knowing the word of God. I said of uh, we in uh, first Corinthians eleven chapter. They'll come. Yes, pick up in verse one and two. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now that you can't make this no plainer. The apostle said, follow me as I also am of Christ. In other words, I've been anointed by God to teach you. Read. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Remember me in some things. All things. All things. All things. <laughs> Whatever Paul instructs, you've got to keep in remembrance of everything that Paul has instructed the church. Because Paul wrote most of the New Testament scriptures. And it amazes me how some say, yeah, but that, that, that's what Paul wrote, Romans first chapter, at the end with Simon and Lord, the lesbian behavior. Jesus said he never condemned it. Jesus did condemn it. Yes, Amen. I don't know where y'all coming from. Amen. The Bible says all scripture all right. is given by inspiration of God. Now, God, he never wrote nothing in the Bible. Amen. But he sent his servants mm -hmm. to write what thus saith the Lord. Amen. I'll read that again. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Yes. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Yes. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Mm -hmm. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered... What, what is this thing now? I see you preach it over YouTube, and they got some kind of... Cap on their head. Yeah. Mm. Look like the Pope. Mm. Pope ain't saved. Amen. Pope is not even a Christian. A Catholic is not a Christian. Now email me on that. A Catholic is not a Christian. Anytime you worship a dead woman, you are not a Christian. Jesus died in the rose again. Mary died and she's still dead. Now you foolish to worship a dead woman. Hallelujah. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonor her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. Yes. For if the woman be not covered, if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Now again, all you preachers out there, you're in my way of YouTube. Go to the Hebrew lexicon, go to the Greek lexicon, get you a Hebrew English translated Bible, and I guarantee you in that passage in verse six, I mean first Corinthians eleven and six. The word covered means veiled. Every time it means veiled. If it's talking about a woman's hair, a woman's hair ain't got nothing to do with a veil. Amen. Again, you have to rightly divide the word of God. Paul would not tell you to wear a veil and then turn around and tell you a woman's hair is a veil. Yeah. That's nonsense. And it wouldn't and you and you you, you out in left field when you say the the husband's a veil. Amen. You, you're making a fool out yourself. Yes. <laughs> and you further a fool when you say, well, that was for the church at Corinth and don't apply today. Show me in the scripture where well, that is for the church then and not for the church today when the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
So again, you go to a church, they don't want the veil covering, women can paint their face, a painted woman represent in the old days a prostitute, a harlot. We dealt with it many times, I'm going to go to it again in Proverbs 7 and 10. I'm trying to bring this out fully. I want everyone to understand, you go to a church where the first lady paints her face, you need to leave away from there running because she ain't nothing but a prostitute in her, what? In her character. Right. Yes. We're talking about a character. Right. Yes. And the character can be revealed because God said, I'll uncover your nakedness. Yes. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle. The young man met a woman dressed like a prostitute. Yes. For the 99th hundredth time, if the woman dressed like a prostitute, how do women dress who are not prostitutes? Amen. So that's very, very clear. Now again, brothers and sisters, we're talking about a separated, sanctified church. Again, give me a uh, is that 2 Corinthians 6 and 14? I want to conclude that. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? You can't go to a church that's not teaching the truth. You can't fellowship with people who are not in semblance of the truth. Yes? And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth? Now that's pretty strong there. Yeah. What, 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 what concourse has Christ with Belial? Amen. Belial means the devil. What relationship <laughs> or what kind of uh, camaraderie can God have with Satan? That's right. None. <laughs> so how can his church have any type of camaraderie with those who are not in his church? That's right. yeah. None. Yeah. One is of Satan and the others of God. What communion can they have? None. Read. And what, what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You are the temple of the living God. I believe he says so. Well, we're going to try to get to that in first Corinthians 6 chapter. Read, read, read then. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from amongst them. And be ye separate, said the Lord. Say who? The Lord. No, prophet Walker said The that. Lord. <laughs> oh, man, now why are you going to get mad at me? All right. <laughs> uh -huh. Come out from amongst them. And be ye separate. Be ye separate. Said the Lord. Oh, and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Not say the proper walk, but say the Lord. Yes. Now if you want to argue, if you want to disobey, you're not disobeying me, and you're not arguing me. You're disobeying God. All right, that's all right. Again, we're talking about Bible divine instructions. It'll lead you and guide you in all truth. And there's no way that you can come against the word of God. When you stand before the judgment throne, you ain't going to have no argument. Amen. Amen. Because you are being uncovered and your nakedness will be revealed. And then I will receive you. And touch not the, and then and then I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Wait a minute. Now I'll receive you if you do what? Come out from the be separate. He won't receive you unless you be a separated people. Yes. Now, I, I tried to explain that to you in its entirety. Also, I want you to take note in Hebrews 4th chapter, uh, verse 13. And we're going to do it. But I want everyone to have a full understanding. Fullness is the only way you're going to see God's face in peace. Now, this is, this is the program that God himself instituted to divide a people from within a people to prove who is the one who's in favor with God, who's in disagreement with God, who's an adversary, and who's not. I agree. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have All, all to do. things are uncovered. Naked. All things are uncovered, huh? And open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Hallelujah. He looks way down into the soul. Amen. He sees everything that we're getting ready to do tomorrow. Yes. For oh, what a mighty God be served. Amen. Church, let's learn how to be in obedience to divine instruction. Let's learn how to humble ourselves. Let's learn how to come to church to have a good time. All right. 
become of the promise God gave us. He promised us something. He said, I'll be a father to you, I will receive you. If God said, I'll be a father to you, I will receive you, don't you know God ain't gonna let nothing happen to his children? Amen. Let Father let something happen to his children. And I tell you one thing, God loves us more than we could ever love our children. And we love our children, my goodness, so much. Can you imagine God loves us more than that? Amen. You can't imagine. Because it's too deep. He loved us so much, he came down from glory and hung on a cross yeah. for us. Amen. And the God said that, that big time love. Amen. He, he, can you all understand what I'm saying? Amen. They nailed spikes in his hands and yes. wrists and hung him on the cross and he stayed there. I don't know how long he stayed there on that cross, but he stayed there until he died. Amen. And when the soldier went to break his leg to find out he's gonna flinch, he said, we don't have to break his leg, he already did. Amen. He did that for love. That's a lot of love. Hallelujah. For somebody. Now, he said, how can he love us? He didn't know it. He knows you because he made you. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone here, God made you. It's just like uh El Masha had a baby. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how, how he feels. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine God feels the same way about every one of us because we his children? Amen. We owe him something. And he requires something. And that is a separated, sanctified life. That's one of the requirements God has. And he won't take it back. Amen. You got to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. I'm going to close with 2 Timothy chapter 2. There is no way that you can get into a conflict with someone's relationship with God or a church's uh, established Christianity Amen. or faith. It is self-evident by the character of the church and the character of the church represents is representative of the people within the church. Uh, I, I'm going to pick up in verse 1. Now therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, God saved us by the grace principle that no matter what we did in our past, He washed away that sin and brings us into holiness. And once we are committed to holiness, now we have an obligation to pick up our cross and follow Him. I read. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, yes. the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. We can only teach those who have a mind to be saved. Right. That's right. Read that again. That's deep. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same witnesses, things that I've taught you, or that Paul has taught us, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. You've got to commit it to faithful men and women who are able to teach others who have a mind to be faithful or have a mind to be saved. Amen. I thank God for those who went out and witnessed the other day. Amen. 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 You may not think that you are accomplishing anything, but brothers and sisters, Amen. when God sees you uh, before you go to work, you decide to get some tracts in your Bible and you're going to go out on the street corner and face them devils and them demon spirits. Amen. And all that aggravation and humiliation. Don't you know God is proud? God, God he stands back and looks. Amen. So don't think. I mean, the word of the Bible says, know you not that your labor is not in vain. I can read now. Watch. Now, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, endure hardness as a good soldier. As a good soldier, who was a soldier? One who fights. A soldier is a person who fights. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, he ain't a soldier. <laughs> or he's prepared to fight. Yes. They train him for one purpose to fight. That's right. Well, we ain't got no war. Yeah, but we're preparing in case the war does come. All right. We're preparing him. And in them days, they, used, they know how to prepare a soldier. Amen. They get everything that mom and daddy put you in your head. And with school teachers put in your head, and they put what Uncle Sam want to put in your head. <laughs> and they, they know how to do it. Oh, yeah. Amen. And they do it rough. Amen. Amen. I look back on them days and I kind of laugh now. But it was, it, it was kind of rough. You would be hungry and go through the food line, and sometimes they would purposely, I know they do it on purpose, they call what they do, shake the spoon. Otherwise, you got a trade. You pass down the line. Sometimes they look at you and you got half a spoon. Keep the line moving. You can't open your mouth and say nothing. 
Now you get a nine, somebody got a full tray, you got a half a tray. You like, well, I wonder what's wrong with you. better not open your mouth. They're training you. They do this on purpose to try to get everything in you that the world or a programmed family institution put in you so that Uncle Sam could put in you what he wanted in you. And when he get through with you, you are a program. Amen. And they tell you to charge that hill, you're going to charge that hill. Close your eyes and charge that hill. Machine guns, both flying there with us, you're going to charge that hill. They've been programmed in you. God is trying to program soldiers that you go up against the devil, and the devil, he looks like an awesome creature. Man, he's bigger than Goliath in the, in the natural context. Bigger than Goliath. But you got to run up here and say, I'm going to beat you up, I'm going to knock you in your head, I'm going to knock you down and stomp on you. Why? Well, I'm programmed now. I'm a good soldier in the army of Why? Because I realize the battle is not mine, the battle belongs to God. Amen. But God got to have some soldiers. You got to have somebody to go and do the fighting. But really, the fighting is God. But he needs somebody to go forward. He left himself not without a witness. Amen. And we are the witness bearers of Jesus. Amen. No man that wars entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that uh -huh. he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. He's got to do it. Bible. Wait. Which is... The Bible way is lawful. Amen. So what, what do we do? We come right back here to divine church. That's the Bible way. Amen. That's God's way. Amen. Thank God for the word. Amen. We are so happy. And we are holy. We are so happy. And we are so much on the battlefield. Happy, but you are not the same. Amen. 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 Amen.